Howdy y'all, welcome back to Little Bits. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about my upcoming PC gaming build and workstation generally. Um, right here I have some of the parts. I've been buying this piecemeal to get this computer put together. I am doing AMD Ryzen as my processor and the case came today and the power supply came today and I still am waiting on RAM and I still am waiting on a hard disk. I do have hard disks around here and there is one I'm going to install in here but it's not gonna be the system disk. But today I decided, uh, you know, this is a piecemeal video. I've been buying these components over time and uh, the case came today so I'm gonna go ahead and film, um, you know, unboxing the components I have so far and installing everything I have so far into the case and then, you know, when the RAM arrives, I'll add that to this film so this is kind of shot out of order. I actually already shot the unboxing for the CPU and the motherboard and the uh, power supply and the case as well. As you can see, the, the case and the power supply are out of their boxes, but that content is not cut, so we have it available coming right up. Now, I wanna just kind of go through all the components, unbox them all for you, put them into the machine, get it up and running. I do plan to use NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super as my GPU. That is a later purchase. For now, I'm gonna get the base system put together, get an operating system on it, and set it up for use as a workstation and a gaming system. Once we get that RTX card in there, we'll be able to, we'll be ready for ray traced Minecraft, that's for sure, and we'll be able to get some uh, VR headgear and get really in depth into the VR gaming ecosystem. Something I haven't experienced yet. All right, so with that said, let's get to it. Here we have the power supply, a Corsair RM850X. I was actually looking for the HX850, but they were all out of stock, hard to find, as are many things. I guess everybody's building computers. I'm not the only one of my colleagues who is talking about having difficulty finding you know, certain cases that they want, certain motherboards that they want, things like that. So everybody's stuck at home building computers and I'm right alongside them. I probably wouldn't be building this if I wasn't stuck at home. This is a modular power supply, meaning that the cables are all completely separated and you only need to install the ones that you need to use. It's also supposedly a very efficient power supply. It has this 80 plus gold certification rating, which is something to do with its power efficiency. So uh, apparently it's really good. Yeah, that is uh, the gist of that. Now, the question becomes, how do we open it? The unboxing champion strikes again. I feel like I'm going to destroy it. Oh, easy peasy turns out. Excellent. Big old fat stack of documentation, although probably only some of it's in English. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a good thing. I'm not complaining about that. Just, I always get excited about the thickness of a documentation, which is what I heard her talking about. And, um, yeah, it's always mostly not English. Zip ties, case badge. I guess these are the cables. That's cool. Nice case for all the many various cables we may or may not need to power our motherboard and all its peripherals. Here is the power supply unit itself.
Oops, <laughs> that's funny. I guess that prevents electric electricity from, well, maybe not. It doesn't look like it's blocking anything. It's just a sticker. Oh no, we've destroyed it. It says words. I'm sure it's uh, not important, honestly. Cats running around. All right, move on to the next component. So here we got a big one. This is the NZXT H510 based on what I keep seeing around is the H500. Um, there's also an H500 Elite and the Elite has like fans, looks fancier. I actually don't care for it as much. And it has a USB-C port. Well, this is an update of H500 that's not the Elite version and it has a USB-C port as well. Uh, it's actually hard to get this whole thing on screen. This is the biggest unboxing item that I have run into so far. Perhaps you will even see my person in frame for once. I don't know where I placed my scissors. Oh, they're behind the box. This is actually not my first choice of case here. Uh, but the one I wanted, the HAF for high airflow XB Evo, which is a Cooler Master case. Um, I just couldn't find it for any reasonable prices. Uh, yeah, so I settled on this one because it was a good price. It doesn't break the bank or nothing. People like it. Good reviews, good ratings and stuff. D-box. D-boxification. Oh, I hope you didn't see the awkward way in which I just performed that but here we go I'm not gonna do any water cooling or anything I'm not interested in the idea of maintaining any kind of custom loop or liquid component inside of my computer case maybe someday in the future I'll give enough of a damn but There's my lighting, my, my fancifiable fancification. Wow, I rather like that case. And so my thinking with this really was, you know, let's, uh, let's get this case temporarily until the case I'm after actually uh, drops in price some. But... You know, I might end up liking it for the long term. Putting fingerprints on the glass already. I do... The case I want has lots of places to put drives and stuff. This one does not. So, you know, we'll see exactly how much I like it. I'm probably not gonna really realistically use any kind of DVD drive or anything. It's got some pretty decent, looks like 120 millimeter fans on it. There's one here, there's one here. I don't see any in the front, but what I've heard about this case is that the way that the airflow is designed, unless you have like a radiator here, because there is a mount for a radiator here, um, you're not supposed to put front fans on it because it actually inhibits airflow, but I'm not sure how true that is. We'll see how it works in my own testing, and yeah. Oh, there's a cover, so I didn't put fingerprints on the glass because I haven't peeled it yet. Sweet action. All right, on to the next component. Boop. So here we have a Ryzen 7 3700X. This will be the heart of our computer. 
We're gonna unbox this sucker right here, right now. Beautiful. Unprepared, as usual. This is the Wraith fan and cooler unit. We are going to use this stock unit. I did a fair amount of research. And I almost went with a Cooler Master 212 or whatever it is. But a lot of people were saying that this stock cooler is actually really good and we can expect it to keep the CPUs, you know, where we need them to be. And it is pretty, pretty hefty looking cooler here. So we will go ahead and use that. But for now, we'll pop it back in the box, save it for the actual build. We'll take that back out. Take a look at the chip. Okay, very nice. There's a little sticker in there, a little case sticker. That's that's a nice touch. I like that. Definitely gonna use that sticker. Now, I'm not gonna take it out of here until we're ready to go ahead and install it. But you know, let's take a look at it. I really like how this is packaged. All right, we'll move on to the next part. Here we have the motherboard for the system, the MSI X470 AMD motherboard Gaming Plus Max. You can see it says AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. This is important because it means that it has the firmware installed on it that it needs to be compatible with the CPU that I purchased, which uh, I found out afterwards that I might have to worry about with this board, but I guess the latest revisions don't have that problem. So this one's ready to go for my CPU. Here's kind of all the sides of the box that's different language, warnings and whatnot, such what. Let's turn that around. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Now, I'm gonna open these up and take a look at them and get the manuals out and stuff like that, but until it's actually time to sit down and do the build, I'm gonna keep everything in their boxes. I do wanna take a look at everything, though. I'm gonna have a little trouble fitting this whole thing on camera. I think oh, that's, we already saw that side. Let's look at the back. This light is not my favorite that ever was or will be. So it's important to know if you are interested in building a Ryzen computer that this X470 is so called because it is the name of the chipset that supports the CPU on this motherboard. I don't know the details of it, but there's a few of them. There's the X470, apparently there's the X570 now, there's the um, B850 or something like that, or maybe it's 450. Uh, so look for the chipsets. They're gonna be a letter and some numbers, and uh, some of them support things like dual, like this one supports dual GPU. I don't plan to do anything with that. I'm probably going to stick to one GPU, but if I wanted to expand to dual GPU, I could with this board, the B450 or 480 or whatever it is. Um, and some other options out there are not compatible with that, although they can do crossfire, uh, which is kind of software implemented dual 
GPU with AMD ATI. Ooh. Knocking stuff over. I don't have enough space. So I'm going to take this out last and look at it. I really, the main reason I am opening these all separately in an unboxable way is screws there, I need to keep track of that, is uh, not even so much to make a video as it is to get the manuals out, but if I'm opening the boxes to get the manuals out, nice little plate there, got some SATA cables, I may not use those, I'm probably going to do M.2, I'm sure that's drivers and things, a case shield, that's nice. Uh, Oh, manual. Wow, that's a proper manual. That's what I like to see right there. What else is in here? Case standoffs. So we've got some more screws and things. So let's make sure we keep those in the box. All right, nothing too exciting there. Got the manual out. circuit board. Now this is a full regular size ATX format. Wow. And a flip. Okay. Wow, that's probably the fanciest motherboard I'd done up and never had in my possession. It's actually very affordable for what it is, except, you know, populating it becomes very expensive. It supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It has four slots for them. I'm gonna do 32. I'm probably gonna start gaming on it with 16. what that is but it's a big heat sink there's heat sinks heat sinks built into it that's pretty cool so there's that I'm actually gonna wrap it up and we will move on to the next part next up is the hard disk and you know I'm using the term hard disk here but this is a very clearly a solid-state drive um, I sometimes also say block device Info, beautiful pictures and info. This is the brand I kind of standardize on, the Evo series specifically that I standardize on. Um, I've been using this these for a while on the recommendation of a colleague and it has always served me well. I apologize, my you may not see it here, but you'll see it throughout this video. My desk is pretty messy. I like to believe that that is a sign that I just use my my uh, workstation and not that I'm just a messy person. Whoop! Oh no! Oh no! This knife needs to be sharpened, and I need to stop using it for these until it is sharpened. I'm gonna end up damaging a component or something. There we go. It's beautiful. This is the largest capacity I've ever purchased. And it costs almost as much as the processor itself. So it better be good. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Got here real quick. I got it from Newegg. They're still shipping. It's interesting. I wonder what those little holes are for. Is that for header pins? Can I install header pins there? No, it's a pretty small pitch. Um, I don't want to do that anyway, but it's interesting. There's contacts on this PCB, those two little gold ones there too, and a little dot. Another one over there. Yeah, well, I'll stop gawking at this and move on to installing it in the system.
So I am going to also install today this three terabyte disk drive that I have uh, from way back in the day. This is a really good hard drive. I didn't use it very much. It should still be good. Um, with any of you remember when the company Backblaze started issuing their first reports of like the hard drives that fail the most in their data centers, uh, I went and looked up the list of the ones that failed the least in the three terabyte range and I went and found a model that was on that list and I grabbed it and this is one of those. So um, I'm hoping that it will prove to be reliable for a long time. It is just a spinning disk. I won't use it for anything vital. It's gonna just kind of be network storage. Okay, so this did not come with instructions, but it looks like we undo this side panel first. And I think these are designed not to come all the way out, these screws here. There is a box in a hard disk tray here. That is it contains what looks like header pins, screws, audio jack of some kind. Yeah, lots of lots of goodies in there. Documentation. Here's where the okay, here's where the documentation is. I'm not sure if that's in frame or not. We'll see. All right, these cords here are wrapped up. This looks like, oh yeah, these are the front, front uh, case panel connectors. That's, uh, that's uh, fine and dandy. All right. Looks like these are for, that's cool, I like that. These are Velcro. This is for routing your cables. So hopefully we will make use of those to make it nice and pretty. I don't know what that is for. It looks like this for the fan. That's a fan power connector. Okay, so according to the documentation that we just got out from the inside of the case, we want to unscrew this, pull it forward, and lift it out. Oh, little like ball connectors. That's cool, I like that. Okay, so that comes away. Try not to get fingerprints on the inside of the glass here. My kid, it's too late, I already have. There's no friggin' way I didn't just get fingerprints on the inside of that. All right, so now we can look at what's inside this case or what kind of space we have. Uh, first things first, before anything else happens, we want to go into our motherboard box, find ourselves this thing. You don't want to forget about that. And you want to do it before you put the motherboard in. Motherboard. Ooh, look at that, it's all fancy. Pretentious. Same thing. This just kind of snaps in there. I said it snaps in. I said burr. It's cold in here. That looks good. There we go, that's what I'm after. Oh, maybe not. OK, 
Okay, that's nice and snug, I think. Well, except that corner. Yeah. So that's in there. Yay. I rather like how that looks, actually. All right, let's put the motherboard together with the CPU and the heatsink and then get it installed in here. All right, so here we're going to install the CPU and the CPU cooler. Now this cooler has thermal paste applied to the bottom already. And we're going to use that. There is a little arrow in this corner, little golden arrow right there in that corner that indicates pin one. And if you look on the underside, you'll see that these pins in this corner where pin one is, I don't know which one it is, it's a little square cut out, like it's a little bit different than the other corners. And what we see is that that square cutout matches this right here. So pin one is up in this corner. So we want pin one up here. to me. Now, installing this CPU cooler. Okay, so with this we have two little like tension arms. One of them has this lever to flip to tighten things and the other one's just loose. And you hook them onto these hooks here and tighten it up. And assuming that I place that correctly over the processor, it should just work. Famous last words. Maybe not that direction. I think this can go on either way as long as you can There we go. It's to be on the processor. Okay. There we go. And this is a fan this is for the CPU, which this is the CPU fan mount. Plug that in right now. And let's take a look at it. I think it looks good to me. Can you see the CPU in there? I definitely see that I moved some thermal paste around when I look real close in there, but we'll get it up and running and we will take some temperatures of it. And if I don't like its thermal performance, I'll take it apart and either reseed it, you know, clean it up, give it some fresh 
superior thermal paste. Everything I've read about the thermal paste included in the, on this claims that it's good. But if I have any trouble with thermals, I will do something about that. Uh, hopefully, we won't have that problem. All right, so that's the hard part. Now, I actually see that I'm going to have trouble installing my RAM here. So I may have to take it apart regardless. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's uh, get this into the case, get the power supply in the case, and move forward. Okay, we see that there's some standoffs already installed here. Here, here, here. with its I.O. ports and okay actually it looks like we need all those there we go and it popped into place that's what we want to see oh you can't even see we need to find a way to keep this out of the weight of those blades I will probably, if I like this case enough to stick with it, I will probably replace these with Noctua's. There's also RGB lighting on this and cables to connect it on the actual fan itself. But I'm not really interested in it for that. I might hook it up at some point, but I don't really care. There is a 510 H510i model that the documentation actually references that contains a whole RGB controller unit on the other side of the case already installed. So if you are interested in that um, and you like this case, that's a good option. All right, I'm gonna get these screws installed off camera. Sweet action, check it out. It is in there. It is secured in there. The back panel is looking good to me. One thing I noticed is there is a little notch down here. One of those standoffs I was poking at didn't have a screw. It lives right here. And whenever it was popping into place, when you saw it pop into place, it was because that hole had found this little peg. So this is a little guide peg to help you get it installed correctly. Once it was lined up with that, it was very easy to get the screws on. Um, let's see if we can get ourselves the power supply unit installed next. It's going from this side. This is where it goes down here. Bakety bink to the bonk. Don't gotta worry about cables getting in the way. This is where the fan goes. Slides in there. To screw that in off camera. I don't, I'm not, not going to make y'all watch that. So here we have just the case connections hooked up so far. We have um, the USB 3.2 Gen 1 connection hooked up, which is the latest USB that this uh, motherboard supports. Uh, we also have the front panel connection hooked up and we have the audio hooked up. There is a cable from this case that supports USB 3.2 Gen 2, but uh, there's nowhere to hook that cable up on here. We also have the case fans hooked up and uh, I'm going to install that larger hard disk I showed. Let's uh, move on. 
So this is where the M.2 drive goes. There's another one down below here where I could install, probably will install a second one later on for use as a, just a redundant RAID 1 array. It comes with this little mount here that moves. You can see it supports multiple sizes of M.2 device. So many of you may know this, but just to recap, this is a M.2 connection, but the drive itself is an NVMe drive, which takes advantage of the PCI Express data bus. So even though it's not connecting into one of these PCIe ports here, this connector allows this device to talk directly to the PCIe bus. It also happens to allow connection to an SS to uh, the SATA bus rather. So some sometimes you'll see this type of drive with two notches, and that will be a it connects to the M.2 connector, but it actually is a SATA drive, and it doesn't go any faster than, I think, 6 gigabits per second. Um, but yeah, so this will connect up like this. There we go, push it in. And then it's designed to be held down like this. Now there's two little screws that came with my motherboard. This actually arrived a day early. Get in there. Get in there, buddy. No, it looks right. That will hold it in place. It's got some nice amount of space underneath it for airflow. And, yep. There we go. So there might be other devices that are M.2 connected but provide different functionality. Drives are the single most common device that you will see for these, and they are not the only one, though. So you will find that, you know, you might have something that reaches out to here, or you might have something that only goes to, to here because they just, quite frankly, didn't need a bigger PCB. You can even see that this one supports a longer card than this one. And then this is a PCIe times one slot that actually is disabled if you install something here. So this slot becomes unavailable even if you have a device here that is not blocking it. As you can see, you can't install something that physically blocks it. So, um, oh, maybe you can't see. There you go. Right here is where I'm pointing. All right, so yeah. Now I'm just waiting on the RAM. It has not arrived yet. So we'll install the RAM and I still also have to install that three terabyte spinning disk. So let's do that next. So here we have the hard drive chassis. You can see I'm on the kind of opaque panel side of things. The PSU is installed here, fan side down, but this chassis comes right out. You can see it's attached to these little rails here via some screws from the bottom. I've attached the hard drive in there. It looks like this supports three hard disks. Uh, I'm only going to have one. I'm probably only ever going to have one. You can also see that these here are for SSDs to mount, so I can mount two SSDs directly to those. I may mount one. I have one sitting around, but if I do that, it'll be... I'll just throw a Linux operating system on it and have a back backup operating system to boot into. Um, but I do primarily intend to use this for Windows exclusively. We'll see what happens, though. So I'm gonna get this screwed down. And here we are, we've got all the power cables wired up. We've got this, I think, 24 pin connector. We also have a six pin and a four pin up here, or actually a, a eight pin and a four pin up here. You can see them maybe a little bit. 
this connector, I, I actually had a hard time finding that these connectors split from eight to four. So there's two CPU connector cables in here. And I was like, where's the, where's the four pin one? And then I accidentally split one apart. I was like, oh no, I broke it. But uh, no, you're supposed to do that. So uh, this could be a little better, this cable management here. I think I've done pretty well on the cable management elsewhere. I already closed up the back panel. You can't see the cables back there, but they're pretty out of the way, so they shouldn't cause any airflow issues. You can see a little bit of the cabling down there, um, power supply there. I did have to take the power supply out to get the appropriate cables in them, but that was very easy. I may also opt for a RTX 2070 Super to save some money because I've been doing some comparison shopping and some watching some comparison reviews and some performance testing between the two. And quite frankly, even though I can see the difference in the numbers of how they perform, I very much doubt that my not very good eyesight will demonstrate any kind of difference between those two cards that I'm able to notice. So we'll see, you know, I would like to have the leeway to have, you know, beefier, graphic sessions in the future, but it, it really is like a $200 difference between those those cards. So uh, we are waiting on the RAM still. So once the RAM gets in, uh, I'll install that and we'll boot it up. I'm gonna run it on a pretty crappy monitor until I can get the monitor I want. You know, that's part of the benefit of building your own PC is that you can, you don't need to make the entire investment up front. This was a pretty big investment for the base system because I kind of went all out, but you know, gaming, this is primarily for gaming, but I do want to make it my everyday computer as well for everything that I do, which is a lot. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next components when we get the chance and wrap up the video soon. This is where it's gonna live. So my impatience got the better of me and I actually ordered this, even though my real RAM will probably come in tomorrow. I wanted to get this set machine set up with an operating system before the weekend was over. So I spent $30 I didn't need to spend on a, an eight gigabyte DDR4 stick of RAM because I knew it would get here before the uh, the RAM that I'm actually gonna use, which is two 16 gigabyte sticks. I also got this, These, this, is, this will allow me to expose the serial port and the parallel port on the back here. So just like an old school machine, I'll be able to connect serial IO and parallel IO to it, which I do want to do. I do some retro computing and it'll be nice to have those interfaces available. So yeah, I'm gonna install this. We do have to install the RAM in a specific order. You can see here in the motherboard's manual, if I can get the page open. If I'm gonna put one stick of RAM in, I have to put it in DIMA slot two, DIMA two slot, DIM A, D I M M A. Okay, so there's two channels, A and B, and each one of them can accept two sticks of RAM, but they have to be put in this order. So you have to install DIM A2 and DIM, A, DIM B2 first, and then you can install the rest. And it looks like it can only accept one, two, or four sticks of RAM. I don't think you can just put three sticks of RAM in here and expect it to operate with all the RAM. All right, so. This is some cheapo RAM. It'll let us get up and running, get the operating system installed, updated, maybe install some games. We can probably even play some games with this, uh, but it will be replaced whenever it gets here by some overclockable 16 gigabyte sticks. Two of them, yes. All right, let's uh, get it installed and see how the machine boots. If it boots, we'll find out. Suspense. So I actually made a pretty silly mistake here. I did not know that this Ryzen 3700X does not have integrated graphics. I must have conflated it with another I was looking at that does have it. Uh, so I had to get this little cheapy discrete graphics card. It is a GT710 MSI, is only $50. So I just grabbed that up real quick and threw it in here. I'm also kind of excited about it. Like it's a silly mistake to make, but what it means is that every cent I spent on my CPU went to an investment in CPU power and not GPU power. So that's kind of neat, but all right. That's something to note. I thought I was getting one with integrated graphics and I did not. 
So yeah, I found that out when the system failed to post. There's some little lights over here. The VGA light went on telling me that uh, there was no graphics available. So after checking manuals, I went and grabbed this little card. It should be good for a cheap computer build in the future and I'll already have the part, but for now it is driving this machine's graphics. Let's turn it on. Woo! RGB. I really don't care about the RGB, but it's neat. Regardless. Oh, it looks like it's gonna get through boot. And, yay. Okay, so it's time to set up an operating system. Okay, so we're at a weird angle in a different spot in the room and we're gonna open this RAM that we got here and replace the little eight gig stick that I have in there just so I could get it set up with these G-Skill Tridents with a Z because, you know, makes it extreme. Whoop. Very nice, very nice. Each of these is 16 gigabytes. I have in the past had uh, higher failure rates with 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM, both like early into their life and straight out of box. Um, it's one reason to still go for eight gigabyte sticks, I think. You're just kind of more likely to run into errors with these 16 gigabyte ones, but hopefully these will be solid and stay solid. So I think it needs to go in like that. And we have to populate uh, dim A2 and then dim B2 first. So I'll pop these in and show you where they are. And then I'll do a screen capture of some games on the uh, GT710. I will compare those same games to how they perform on whatever GTX card I end up getting. All right, moving forward. And there we are. You can see that they're in slot essentially two and four. Uh, this is 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's probably all this system will ever need. I may not ever add more. So as long as these have a good life, and as long as I don't end up needing more than 32 gigabytes, which is a possibility because I do a lot with virtual machines, but usually only temporarily. I only, I only need like maybe eight gigabytes of memory allocated to a, vir to a series of virtual machines at any given time. Let's film some games. We'll wrap up the video with just some screen captures of some game footage, and I will show you a gamut of games that this little GT710 runs well, and I will show you games that it cannot run playably as well. So. That's how we'll wrap up the video. Let's move on with that. little Egan has made a friend. Hm. I have a feeling this is going to be a problem. Obviously, anyone who has ever glimpsed a fae would know that. Unlike little Egan here, your head holds more than fantasies.
Did you need something? And it is my duty to offer it, as I have sworn. I trust you've spoken with Rothschild. I hope he can make some headway with the data you've... Pleasure to meet you, Bolt Hunter. I am Sir Hammerlock. At your service. I came out here to research the bully. Ah! Ah! 
So there it is. Just wanted to say a last few words. First of all, thank you for watching. If you watched this far, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And just kind of doing this for fun for myself. So, you know, if you got some fun out of it or information out of it, you know, I'm glad it helps. I just wanted to say some final words about the build. So far, you know, I am not done, but this is the state it's going to be in until I can afford more parts. I showed just a few games and they weren't running at necessarily the same setting. I have to do more work understanding the best way to capture these video games. I tried to show Fallout 4 as well, which does not run playably, but I could not get it to capture properly, so I have to find a better so I have to find a better solution for capturing game footage. I also didn't spend time figuring out how to put frame rates onto the screen or anything, so we don't have a lot of data for that. I just kind of wanted to show what it looks like to the human eye. You'll, you might notice that I was running Borderlands 2 and Borderlands Game of the Year Edition Enhanced version at different resolutions, and Borderlands 2 ran quite a bit better, but it also looked worse, so you know, I was just kind of trying to get them into a playable state. I would say that the state that I showed the first game off in is not playable, and um, you know, I haven't found anything that is playable yet that I own at full graphics, at least among the 3D kind of shooter games. I keep reiterating this throughout the video. In the future, I will have a RTX 2070 Super, or if I'm feeling fancy, an RTX 2080 Super installed into this thing. And I will do an update video then. I have a few other parts I'm gonna add. I still haven't put my serial parallel communications ports in there yet. Um, so there's more upgrades coming besides just the graphics card, but the graphics card is really the big one that we need for games. And of course, new monitor and a VR head mount display are not exactly upgrades to the computer, they're more peripherals for the computer, so those kind of don't count. But we will get them in time as we can afford, and I'll keep y'all posted on this this machine and also the work I do with it because besides gaming I plan to do quite a bit of computer science and I'm going to talk a lot about the operating systems. All right, thanks again y'all. Y'all have a wonderful weekend, week, day, night, whatever time it is for you.